fledgling capital of southern Sudan, Juba, is open for business, according to the World Bank's recent survey, Doing Business in Juba 2011. Reporter Kathy Maitany has that story. It's being touted as Africa's fastest growing city. No one knows this better than Ben Magom, supervisor at the brick-making company ESP International. He says he has seen firsthand how quickly Juba is expanding by the 2,000 or so bricks he and his colleagues produce a day. It's for the businesses, for homes. When somebody buys the bricks, we can go and the, construct the houses, the schools, the factories, see, doing a very, very good job here in Juba. On the eve of southern Sudanese independence and with high hopes of long-term peace, investors from the region and outside are setting up shop. One such company is the South African-owned Southern Sudan Beverages Limited, which in recent months announced that it will be pumping in an additional $15 million into its brewing and bottling operations. Ever since the signing of the North-South peace deal in 2005 that ended more than two decades of civil war, the fledgling Southern Sudan administration has been setting up its regulatory framework. Maria Miller is with the World Bank Group Investments Climate Advisory Services. South Sudan has modernized relevant laws, re-established a company registry, promoted public-private dialogue, and established an institutional framework for investment generation and promotion. According to a recent World Bank survey, Juba scores relatively high on starting a business, dealing with construction permits and enforcing contracts. The World Bank's Maria Miller. Thanks to Juba's business registry, which was established in 2006, entrepreneurs can start a business in just 15 days. More than 12,000 businesses have in fact registered in the last five years. The costs of starting and maintaining a business are more than twice the average cost in sub-Saharan Africa. One big reason is because of southern Sudan's lack of roads and other infrastructure. George Gines is owner of Notos Lounge Bar and Grill. We don't get electricity from the grid, or when we get it, sometimes it's not stable, uh, spoiling most of our equipment. But then we have to turn on the generator, but then we struggle to find diesel. Or we have to go into the black market and find diesel at two times or three times the price. He says the government has a long way to go to streamline investment in other procedures. Unfortunately, we have raised a lot of expectations within the people. The people believe that after July 9th, we're going to have a completely different country. No, it's going to take time until we set up our own systems. We're going to have our own investment law. Gein says that, despite the challenges, he finds it personally fulfilling to invest in the city of his birth. Kathy Maitany for VOA News, Juba. For more information on any of today's stories, please visit us online at voaafrica.com. You can also visit us on Facebook. Just search for In Focus.